I want to talk about this story that the kids gave to us because I really believe this. I think there's lots of folks in our day and age today who need to understand that Jesus Christ came to this world as a baby for each one of us. That's so important. Please don't just celebrate Christmas, right? Did you get your shopping done yet? Are you done? Are you all done? Great. Did you at least get the tree up? Okay, three people. Awesome. It's so cool. So listen, we can all get caught up in so much, and then all of a sudden, just a few days out from Christmas, we're desperate to do what God wants us to do, and that's to celebrate him. It, the kids were right, weren't they? Crazy, busy, peaceful, but did you hear that other word? Holy night. When Jesus came and was born, and the shepherds were the first to hear, God brought great news that the long-awaited Messiah was born. But I need, I need us, in just a couple minutes, I need us to remember this. There were three decisions that the shepherds made once the angel came and told them that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Mary would wrap this baby in cloth and lay the Savior of the world in the manger. But in order to see what God had done, there were three decisions that the shepherds needed to make, and I really want you to, to, to just hone in on this because there's, those three decisions are the same decisions that God wants us to make if we're willing. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to say three words with me. Go seek praise. Let's say them together, ready? Go seek praise. Let's do it again. Go seek praise. There are three decisions that God wants us to make. The first decision, we have to do it just like the shepherds. We have to be willing to go. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 15. The kids did such a great job sharing it. I just want to pull a couple of scriptures out. Would you read this with me? When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Here's that first decision. Let's say it. Be willing to go. Can you imagine if the shepherds heard the great news and said, let's just see how it works out? No, they, they decided to go. They decided to leave where they were. I have one challenge in this first decision, but it's so important. What does God want you to go and see this Christmas? To leave all of the busyness, all of the things, the craziness, the parties, all of that's fine. All the good food, man, I am a little bit hungry. All of it's fine, but, but what does he want you to do to go and see that the Savior is born? I don't know what kind of year you've had. Maybe it's been crazy. Maybe you've had some disappointment. Perhaps you've lost some people that you love. I don't know what this 2019 has been like, but I can guarantee this. God wants you to make the decision to go and get a fresh look at Jesus Christ. He's real. He is so real. This baby in the manger isn't just a story. It's not a fairy tale. It's real. I was sitting in a McDonald's. What a holy place to, to be in. I was sitting in a McDonald's years ago, and, and a woman in our church had lost her husband. And this, this man's uh, son-in-law was a pastor from the Chicago area. And when the woman called me, she said, I lost my husband. He didn't attend church. She said, would, would you be willing to share and do the funeral service with my son-in-law? I said, sure. So he and I met at McDonald's. 
And as we began to, to unpack the service, he was taking the lead. I said, whatever you need me to do, and he asked me to read some scripture and to talk about the family. But as we were talking right at Christmas, there really wasn't anybody in this McDonald's. I think we had a Coke and maybe a, a holiday pie or something like that. And, and all of a sudden, he looks at me and he goes, you know, I don't really believe this. I, I, I backed up. I said, what? He said, well, I, I know you think I'm a pastor, but I pastor a church where we really believe all of these stories are just stories, and they're really not true. And I, and, and I listen, I, I want to be careful this morning. We're not here to criticize anybody. In that moment, can you imagine? He didn't need me to launch into a lecture on, on the shepherds and Jesus. What he did need me to do is to say this to him, and this is exactly what God gave me for him. I looked at him and I said, I feel sorry for you that you only see it as an allegory, a metaphor, a story, a, a, a legend. Because I said, when you go and see Jesus for yourself, you're never the same. But you've got to be willing. What's the first decision? You've got to be willing to what? Go. Here's the second decision. You've got to be willing to seek. Look at this passage of Scripture. Let's read it together. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Now see, once you decide you're going to go, have any of you ever decided to do something, you thought it was a really good idea, but you put it off? Any procrastinators in the room? Okay, great, just checking. I'm just checking, right? What's the second decision? Say it with me. Be ready to seek. See, once you decide to go, you can't procrastinate. You need to see Jesus right now. He's got fresh insights, new truth. He's got this transformational life we talk about at Bridgewater Church. He's got that waiting for you. Listen, please hear me. The word hurry means to, to go fast, to speed away, but, but there's also more to this. The word hurry also means to have a desire to be Willing to seek and to search with determination. How badly do you want to see what God has for you? Are you like me? Do, do any of you ever get in a rut? Have any of you ever just gotten a rut and just it's just a scene feels like it's the same thing all the time? Right? I just and that, that's why we love a vacation, right? I love the people who always go to the same place for vacation, too. I don't quite understand, but listen. I have a question. Are you willing to really seek what God has for you between now and Christmas? It's only about 10 days. I love that about the shepherds. The shepherds were ready to seek. They desired earnestly. That's the literal translation. They desired earnestly. They were determined to see Jesus. And that's hard when you get caught up in where do we have to be? Where's the next party? I've got to get the gifts wrapped. Did we get the baking done? Is the tree up? All of that's important, but I'm, I'm challenging us this morning. What's the first decision? We have to be willing to what? Go. What's the second decision? Seek. I dare you. I challenge you. Just like the shepherds, go seek him. They left their traditions, they left their, their, their opinions, they left all the things that they had thought. Man, they left the sheep. I don't know, maybe they took a couple, I don't know. But they left and they were seeking God. And that leads to the third decision. Here's the third decision. And let's read this passage of scripture because it is so, it's so important to the story. There's two verses I want us to read together as they come on the screen. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. 
And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. It's true. He's born. The king has arrived. The king is here. And here's the third decision. Let's say it together. Be eager to praise. See, sometimes I'm eager to be frustrated. You? Anybody complain lately? Anybody get upset? Does anybody have children? Does anybody have grandchildren? Right? See, I'm all about getting it right. I love this. It took so much work for these kids to do this. They got it right. They worked at it. Was every single thing perfect? In my opinion, it actually was. Even the imperfect became perfect this morning. Amen to that. Right? But, but I will tell you this. There's something that happens to us. What, what, what happens to us as adults that we're not as eager to praise and be happy and move around and celebrate and raise our hand and shout glory to God. How did we get so old that we became so calm? See, the shepherds went to Jerusalem, or to Bethlehem, close to Jerusalem. I'm not trying to change the story. They went to Bethlehem. They found this incredible baby in a manger. And it says they just began to, to praise him. They just began to be filled with awe and amazement. The literal translation is wonder. They were full of wonder and awe. Have you ever tried to recapture some of those wonderful moments of childhood when you were just so open and your eyes were gleaming and glittering and the lights and the presents and the packages were all so awesome. I think there is a way to recapture the wonder of our childhood every time we really look at the manger and we are full of Jesus is born. If you're here this morning and you don't know about God or you're trying to figure out who he is, what a great place to land this morning. What a, what a wonderful place to hear these kids sing and to know that Jesus Christ is alive and he wants you to be full of wonder. And you know how that happens? When you find Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You're full of wonder. You're full of amazement. You know why? Because he came to forgive sinners of sin. And he came to give, give grace to people who were far from God. That's why Jesus started out as a baby. So we'd be open to the truth that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. And the shepherds, what happened to them? They went back praising God. They, they didn't go back and say, I wonder if those sheep are still there. I wonder if somebody took one or two. I, I, I wonder what everybody th I, thinks. I, will they believe us? Nobody asked that. You know what they did? They were filled with wonder and they kept praising. And I'm challenging you. Here's three decisions. What's decision number one? Go. What's decision number two? Seek. And what's decision number three? Praise God and believe. From now till Christmas, with every light strand that goes out the third time, with every gift you ordered from Amazon that you get the reminder it's not coming until after you need it. For the three to five inches of snow that's going to make somebody mad tonight. But there's going to be some child who remembers that Christmas and snow go together. I dare you. I challenge you to be full of praise. And to trust. Here's what we're going to do to close. Would you stand to your feet? 
right now, here, here's what I need you to do, okay? I'm ch for everybody, my team that's looking at me, I'm just changing things up just a minute. Okay. All right, here's what I need you to do. All right, look at them. They just stopped. I love that. Here's what I need. I need everyone right now to just do something bold. Yeah, someone next to you could be sick. You're just going to have to trust God and take a hand. Okay? I want you to take somebody's hand. Okay? Right now. Right now. I'm, I want you just first. This is what I want you to do. I want you to praise God for something Christmas. Something gifts or family or whatever comes to mind right now. I want you to do that before I pray for you. I want you to praise God for something Christmas. Something in this season. You might even want to thank him for snow. I don't know. But right now, do it. Ready? Bow your heads. I want you to start. I want you to start praising God right now. Come on. Let him hear it. Just say, God, thank you so much. Thank you. You can say it out loud. It's okay. I want the room to be full of praise this morning because at, in just a minute, the whole band's coming up and we're going to sing together and we're going to praise God. So right now, are you praising him? Are you thanking him for your kids? Are you thanking him for the gifts? Are you thanking him for the manger and the baby? Are you praising him? Come on, church. Just praise him. Father God, right now in this place, as, as the band gets ready to lead us in praise and as they come up, God, right now I want to praise you. I want to thank you for every person in the room. And I don't want to be calm and I don't want to be quiet. I want to be full of joy. I want to thank you for every child that needs a miracle in the room. We've got some parents right now that need some children who, who have some children that need to be healed of sickness and of disease, God. I'm thanking you and I'm praising you right now, Jesus, for the children in the room that need a miracle and need a blessing and need you, God, to heal them. God, I'm praising you for miracles, for adults who have cancer and need your, your blessing and need your healing touch. God, I'm praising you and I'm thanking you for the marriage that's struggling, but the hope that you're going to give in 2020. God, I'm praising you this morning for people that are seeking God and trying to figure out who he is, for people that are far away from the church and need a church home and need to come back. I'm praising you, God, for people who have families that are broken. I'm praising you, God, for people that are struggling and we're going to get together with them this, this Christmas. And I praise you for the miracles of reuniting people, changing lives, and God helping us see the baby in the manger for the first time. Jesus, I praise you. And as we prepare to go out of here, God, help us not to get overwhelmed with weather and gifts and, and, and parties and food. But every time we begin to feel frustrated, may we think of the hand we're holding next to us. And may we pray for others and may we remember that this season was never about trying to cram everything into a few weeks. This was about the beginning of transformation that started in a manger and it ended on a cross and it, it, it just found peace and power and transformation in an empty tomb. God, that's what this is. So, Father, for the person on our right and on our left, may, the, may, they, may they go and may they seek and may they praise. And may we never forget that Jesus Christ isn't just a story. Jesus is the Son of God. He is real. He is the Savior. And all we have to do is put our trust in Him. So, God, we're going to praise you. The band is going to lift up this song we're going to praise you with our whole hearts. We're going to give you glory and honor. And when we leave this place and we thank our kids and we hug these babies who, who sang so beautifully, and as we look at trees and we look at lights, God, may we think of you. And it all began in a manger. 
Jesus, thank you that you give all of us the opportunity to see you even today. That's what Christmas is all about, seeing the Savior. And we praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Let's worship and praise him right now.